everybody, Earl at thelogbook.com, back for more Voyages of Shelf Discovery, back to unpacking the Babylon 5 collection, and just thought I'd stick them in front of the camera and talk about them for a bit while I am doing that. This is Wave 2, which, if I recall correctly, came in 1998, uh, several months after the first wave. Again, by Diamond Select, and if I remember correctly, this was the last wave that you could expect to, like, go into your local Toys R Us and get. I do remember doing precisely that because, as you can see over there on the left, we have Ambassador Kosh. I love Kosh. And Kosh is... Uh, he might just be the signature character of Babylon 5, e even though uh, Jakar deserves to be the signature character of Babylon 5. But visually, the most striking is Kosh, which is funny because the character is, you know, in terms of costume, he's mostly drapery. Seriously, he's mostly drapery. His action figure, as such, is uh, pretty much a paperweight. The head rotates. That's a rotating head. But other than that, very, <laughs> very good likeness of Kosh. As we discussed with the first wave of Diamond Select's B5 figures from the 90s, again, the fandom was starving for any merch we could get our hands on, so we were very happy to have these. But again, we wind up with a wave that is mostly statuary. Uh, going to the right from Kosh, you have Vir Koto, who was Londo's diplomatic attaché, burdened with terrible knowledge. Londo is mostly a statue. His head rotates, his shoulders move, but again, because he has this longer coat than most characters that would complicate leg movement rather than rather than doing what Kenner used to do with think back to Kenner figures from the original Star Wars collection like uh, Jawas or Obi-Wan Kenobi the robes were sculpted onto the legs and everything still moved well this is the exact opposite of doing that oh there are robes therefore nothing will move so Veer's legs do not move actually uh, at least on my figure, they are joined together down by the, the cuffs of his pants. His legs are. So, wow. Next up is Ivanova, overdue for a figure. And, again, kind of as we discussed with Wave 1, um, Ivanova's figure is a bit of a... bit of a spoiler? Because Ivanova is not always wearing that uniform. Of course, by 1998, I don't know how much of a concern that is. Let me put things in context for 1998. In 1998, as far as being a syndicated show, Babylon 5 had been canceled. It had been rescued by TNT, the Turner Network Television, which, of course, was also under the Warner Brothers umbrella. And TNT bankrolled a fifth season, a total, over time, of four two-hour movies, all of which premiered on TNT. And TNT also became the exclusive place to see reruns, at least in the United States market. So TNT went all in on B5. You could now see it every day in the correct order, more or less. I think there maybe were some speed bumps very early on as far as correct airing order, which with this show is actually... This is, this is really the first show intended for prime time that was not just a straight-up soap, where seeing it in broadcast order is actually very important. You can't just show it in any order. You know, it's not like your local station's five-day-a-week reruns of Star Trek The Next Generation, where it just, you know, it doesn't matter. 
uh, Babylon 5 was really the show that stuck its foot in the door of making it possible to tell a very linear story where you're counting on the audience to keep score. So, how important it was for Ivanita's figure to be less spoilery by 1998, I, I don't know. And like I said, the fandom was... Uh, merch for this show was so overdue, the fandom was not complaining. It's It's more of a thing that I think of now as, you know, I watch new people coming on board Babylon 5 fandom. Thanks to things like the Blu-rays or the remastered version that started out on HBO Max, but then HBO Max ditched, like HBO Max has done with a lot of things. <clears throat> and the... I, I try to... Anytime I try to bring someone into B5 fandom, I really try to handhold them through it and you know, body block them from seeing the spoilers. So, it, you know, it's a thing that perhaps only I am worried about. Over there on your far right is Marcus the Ranger. Again, absolutely no leg articulation. Although the character is renowned for his long flowing hair, I think they kind of took that into account and sculpted it in such a way that wouldn't inhibit you know, side-to-side -side movement of his head. Because he was kind of the action hero. Frustratingly. Both of his hands are fists. I mean, he's just... It reminds me of the old Galoob Star Trek The Next Generation figures. You know, where you had one hand was a fist, and the other hand was permanently holding a phaser. They came with tricorders that they could not hold. <laughs> Thanks, Galoob. And similarly, no accessories on these guys. No accessories whatsoever. If they had... They could have included Marcus's fighting pike and maybe sculpted at least one of his hands where he could hold that. But no. No. Sorry, no. <laughs> Just not, not getting that. Ivanova came with a Star Fury. All these figures came with uh, different ships. And so you had a Star Fury for Ivanova, you had a Vorlon ship for Kosh, you had another Centauri ship for Veer. I forget what Marcus came with. It may have been the Earth Shuttle, or I could be mistaken there. It, it honestly escapes me. And I have all the ships in a box somewhere. I really should have dragged those out. Uh, maybe there will be one more video in this series where I just drag those ships that came with each of the figures and remember who came with what. If you look carefully at Kosh here, real quick, you notice that his detailing, there are some disturbingly flesh-colored parts of, the more organic parts of his suit, because that was a suit that encased him and gave him a breathable atmosphere, or so we thought. The rest of the detailing on the Kosh figure is kind of a bronze-looking brown and very dark blue. The variant for Wave 2 was the Vorlon Visitor, which is not a character that existed on the show. So basically, this is the same figure as Kosh. Okay, you see the Vorlon ship that came with Kosh there. The same ship came with the Vorlon Visitor. Uh, this was a Diamond exclusive, so you could only get this guy at various comic shops that you frequented back in the day, if they were, if they did have distribution from Diamond. Um, and they reversed the detailing so that where you have blue on the Kosh figure... You have bronze, and where you have the bronze on the Kosh figure, you now have green. There was never a Vorlon visitor <laughs> on Babylon 5 for its entire run. Not in the five seasons of the show, not in any of the movies, not in the direct-to-video movies that followed, not even in Legend of the Rangers. 
there were no Vorlon visitors. There was a second Vorlon that we got to see, but this is not him. This is just this is just a cheap repaint of Kosh, and you know what the heck? <laughs> it's it's funny. We're just going to invent a, a character out of whole cloth here and say, oh yeah, you know, Kosh had a Vorlon visitor. You know, it, it's Mrs. Kosh. Funny factoid. Before the pilot got filmed, before the script got revised, the pilot movie uh, did mention that Kosh had a, a... There was a Mrs. Kosh. Okay, try to wrap your head around this. A Vorlon wedding. And I think I'm going to stop there. Thanks for watching our coverage of Wave 2 of the Babylon 5 figures. Music